All right, so here we go. We're going to knock off this uh, this one example. So now I've got this matrix, this 1, 0, 11, 24, 0, 1, negative 5, negative 9, 0, 0, negative 28, negative 56. Hopefully I haven't done any crazy arithmetic. Um, this is one of those things, once you know how to do it by hand, it's probably best just to put, put it into a calculator. It's easy to make mistakes. Um, so let's see, if we divide the third row by negative 28, I'll get 0, 0, 1, and negative 56 times negative 1 over 28 is going to give me a positive 2. I remember in grad school I was too cheap to buy a calculator. Um, actually, I was an undergraduate, and I remember we had to do matrices, and I was multiplying out 15 by 15 matrices, size matrices by hand, so probably not the best idea that I ever had. All right, so notice now we've got... Um, We've got a 1 in the top left, zeros everywhere. We've got a 1 in the middle, zeros everywhere. I've got a 1 next along this diagonal entry. All I want to do now is get zeros above it. So we're almost there in terms of knocking this problem out. Okay, so it looks like to get a 0 in row 1, if I take negative 1 times row 3, excuse me, I said negative 1, negative 11 times row 3, and add that to row 1, that should give me, that'll give me my new row 1, and it looks like it should make a 0. It looks like if I just take 5 times row 3 and add that to row 2, that will simply give me my new row 2. Okay, so again, the only rows that are changing are row 1 and row 2. So I'm going to leave my 0, 0, 1, 2 row alone just so I don't accidentally do something to it. So I'm going to do this first step. So if I take negative 11 times 0 and add it to 1, that'll just give me 1. Negative 11 times 0, add it to 0, that's still 0. I'll take negative 11 times 1, well that's negative 11 plus 11, that's a 0, that's the whole point. Negative 11 times 2 is negative 22. Negative 22 plus 24 is going to give me just plain old 2. And now I'll take um, I'll do the second step. So if I take 5 times 0, I'm multiplying row 3 and add it to row 2, I'll still have a 0. If I take 5 times 0 and add it to 1, well, that's still 1. If I take 5 times 1 and add that to negative 5, ta-da, I get my 0. And if I take 5 times 2, that's 10, and add that to negative 9, it looks like uh, that'll give me, whoops, almost sort of negative, that'll give me positive 1. Okay. So what this means in conclusion is our solution to this original system of equations, it says 1x plus 0y plus 0z is 2. 0x plus 1y plus 0z is 1, so y equals 1. And then 0x plus 0y plus 1z equals 2. So we have a unique solution. Sometimes you'll see it written as 2, 1, 2 um, to our s original system of equations. And you can go back into our original, you know, it never hurts to check if you're taking a test or something. This is something, if I wasn't running out of time, I would plug it back in to make sure I, I had my right answer. If you plug 2 in for x, 1 in for y, 2 in for z, you will get 6 out. Same thing in the second row. If you plug in 2 for x, 1 for y, and 2 for z, you'll get 1 out. Third row, if you plug 2 in for x, 1 in for y, 2 in for z, you will also get negative 3 out. So this is, in fact, a correct solution. So um, so I hope I didn't go through this too quick. Um, again, the arithmetic on these can be pretty, you know, pretty tedious. You're doing gobs and gobs and gobs of addition and subtraction um, and multiplication. I mean, it's relatively simple arithmetic, but um, you're just doing so much of it. If you have to do it by hand, it's easy to make one little mistake especially too if you end up with weird decimals or fractions floating around um, it can cause a bit of a nightmare so but this is the basic outline for solving um, systems of equations you could do the same thing if instead of having three variables floating around you could have four variables five variables six variables a hundred variables and this is where this stuff really comes in useful is when you have many many variables that you have to solve you don't want to do um, substitution or these other techniques um, and this is actually what computers are programmed to do they use uh, these matrix matrix techniques to uh, 
efficiently solve large linear systems of equations, which are definitely out there and um, maybe I, I would say everyday real life, maybe not my everyday real life and your everyday real life, but there's definitely um, scientists and engineers that encounter these sorts of things all the time um, and they have to find solutions for them. So this is the basic idea on how you get going. If you have any questions on this, feel free to let me know. Um, there's also other ways to solve these linear systems of equations using inverses. We'll talk about that in another video as well.